Hello, V. Anton Sprawl here again. This is my second video about algorithms, talking about them in a way that everyone can understand, whether you know anything about programming or not. In the first algorithms video, I introduced algorithms using the example of sorting, putting things in order. And I explained that when people put things in order, they usually use either the selection or the insertion methods. But those methods aren't particularly fast ways of sorting. If you haven't checked out that video, the link is below in the description. But in this video, I want to talk about how we sort things more quickly than a simple selection or insertion sort. Remember that we're measuring the amount of work done in a sort by how often we have to compare two items to see which one is lower. With insertion and selection sort, when we double the number of things we're sorting, we end up doing four times the number of comparisons. So these methods quickly get frustratingly slow when we start dealing with large numbers of items. To see how we might do better, consider the following. Suppose you've got two separate piles of playing cards. Now the cards in each pile are in order, and you want to combine these two piles into one sorted pile. Because the cards in each pile are already in order, we'd like to take advantage of that instead of, you know, starting over. One thing we could do is take the cards from one pile and insert them one by one in the other pile. Now that's not bad, but we can do even better. Instead, let's place the piles face down and turn over the top card of each pile. Whichever card is lower, we'll place on top of a new pile that we make below, then turn over the next card in that pile. And we just keep doing this until we've moved all the cards into the new combined sorted pile. Now this is known as a merge, and it's a quick way to combine two sorted collections into one. Remember, we're measuring how many times we have to compare two cards. And in a merge, we move one item into the combined collection after each comparison. So merging two groups of eight cards, for example, would take 16 comparisons. Now, suppose instead we had 16 unsorted cards that we needed to put in order. If we sort these using the standard insertion sort, each card takes a little more work than the last to insert, so sorting all 16 will take an average of around 67 and a half comparisons. But, Suppose we start by splitting the 16 cards into two stacks of eight, and we sort the first stack using insertion sort. Well, that'll take an average of 17 and a half comparison. We sort the second stack separately, taking another 17 and a half comparisons. So now we're up to a total of 35. We can then merge those two stacks using 16 comparisons for a total of 51. So we've reduced the number of comparisons from 67.5 to 51. Well, that's a nice improvement. And the more things you have to sort, the bigger the improvement can be. Suppose we have 32 items to sort. We could sort the whole collection using insertion sort, but remember that doubling the items means four times the amount of work, so that would take about 264 comparisons. Or, we could take the 32 items, split them in half, and insertion sort each half. That would take 67 and a half comparisons for each half, or 135 total, plus 32 comparisons to merge the results, for a grand total of 167. But wait, why insertion sort each half? Instead, let's take each stack of 16 split those in half, and insertion sort those stacks of eight instead. We already know how this works out. We insertion sort each stack of eight and merge the results for a total of 51 comparisons. That means we can get to the point where we have two stacks of 16 cards for a total of 102 comparisons. And then for 32 comparisons more, we can merge those together and then we have a total of just 134 comparisons to sort our 32 items. Using merges to sort items is known, cleverly enough, as a merge sort. And we could go even bigger for even more time savings. Remember, 
With Insertion Sort, when we double the number of items, the comparisons multiply by 4. With Merge Sort, it's much better. When we double the number of items, we sort each half separately, so that part is exactly double what it would be for the half size. Then we have to merge, but the number of comparisons for the merge becomes a smaller issue the more items we're sorting. Here's a spreadsheet showing the number of comparisons, and I'm doubling the number of items in each row. Note the calculation for the values in this column. Each cell is twice as much as the comparisons in the previous row, plus the number of items. Again, that's for sorting both halves and then merging the results. Now compare this column to the one on the right to see the difference in the number of comparisons needed between the merge sort method and the insertion sort method for varying numbers of items. With a little over 16,000 items, for example, we need about 230,000 comparisons to sort using merge sort, which sounds like a lot until you see that we need over 67 million comparisons if we use insertion sort. So merge sort is clearly a better way to sort. Sorting stuff in separate piles and merging is faster than sorting everything at once. Now, you may have noticed, though, that when the number of items is small, insertion sort actually has fewer comparisons than merge sort. For this reason, even when we're using merge sort, we're best off breaking up our items into groups of maybe eight or so, and then merging the results up from there. If we wanted, though, we could use merging for the whole sort. We could consider each of our original items as, you know, stacks of one, and then merge them into stacks of two, and so on. But we'll come out a little better if we sort small groups with insertion sort first. There are lots of other algorithms that quickly sort things. For general sorting, that is, sorting that works for any uh, collection of items, most algorithms make use of this idea that we see here in merge sort, where we break the items into groups that we sort separately. There are other fast sorting methods that work on different principles, but those only sort items that meet certain criteria. We'll look at more sorting algorithms in future videos. So that's it for this one. As always, please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and feel free to suggest topics for future videos. Thanks for watching.